No, 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 I'll be honest. This is uh, this is way above my pay grade here, but I am not certified or qualified to be doing this. But I'll say this: for some reason, the water on the roof gives you decent traction. The snow, however, is like an ice sheet. The dust from the insulation is like an ice sheet. So once we get it cleaned off. As long as you're not stepping on the snow, I think, I think we'll be all right. Same as last words. Oh, mercy. Step on those stitching screws if you can. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, there's one. Oh, baby. Hold on. Step on that screw. Oh. Easy, cowboy. Oh. Easy, dude. Okay. This thing is so heavy. The weight of it is unreal. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. No, 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 no. Dude. Hang on to that insulation. Oh, scary business. I'm going to put this down so I can grab it. Oh, oh, mercy, hold on. Here, grab my hand. Take two of us. Oh, You got her? Yeah, let me regroup my feet for just a second. Woo! Okay, mercy. going to the other day we got this first row done and then two more of bottom panels two more of top so one one length or width of the insulation so that is three full runs which is why we have three caps there so today we've been able to get so far 
let's see, eight, and this will be 10, that's 10, and then 12, and so on and so forth. We are running into an issue where when you get on these beam areas where the purlins overlap, it's twice as thick. And initially, I was drilling those with just chintzy drill bits. They kept breaking, and then you'd end up having to use a screw to start the hole, get it going, and then you'd have to toss that screw and grab another one, sometimes twice. So it was a waste of screws and a long time. And so finally we got some good drill bits. And since you have to go clear into town to get good drill bits, I went and got some of these really kind of more high-end drill bits. And it's gone through everything really, really well, which has saved us, I think, a ton of time getting these panels down over top of the double purlin area. You run into it at every third of the building. Well, if you guys are wondering, yesterday we were sweeping all of this off and it was pretty slippery. And I actually ended up slipping and going all the way down right there and stopping right where that snow is all bunched up. And I thought I was a goner. That was a little wild. My heart was racing just a little bit and my friend James just saw me disappear and thought I was off that edge. So we have kept things really uh, intense around here. We are coming down to our last one, two, and three rolls of insulation. Where we're getting the issue now is the snow is hard and and icy and having to pull these out isn't, it's not as dangerous because we're not over here anymore. But as you can see right here, the water is pooled in there. It's created an ice block. It is melting and it is going away. It's not ideal. I know you really want to keep these 100% dry, but I think it'll be okay, especially where we're not casing it in on both sides. We're just really putting one sheet on. It can still kind of get a little bit of airflow. Um, it should be able to dry out and um, I don't think we'll have any problems. So hopefully that's the case. That's the plan. That's kind of what we have to. If not, we'd have to pull up all this insulation. That's a lot of money. And I think it will still be okay just leaving it, letting it dry and doing its thing. If this is inside of the house, it'd be a different situation. Inside the building, I really am not as concerned. If you're not paying attention, this stuff can kind of get pulled to one side. So you really got to watch it. What we noticed on these last two or three we did, it got pulled to the side a little bit. So we have to undo these screws to lift the whole thing up. And something that I can't remember who told me this, maybe the manufacturer or my friend who's put these up, but he said, if you have to back a screw out, it's really smart to just toss the whole screw and the washer good garbage shut up so grab all new screws when you do these um, just so that the washers are fresh and not torn they're just gonna get the best seat possible here's the definite thing you have to be very aware of is this roof and the cold temperature has a turning point and it just switches like that we were adjusting that black foam that seals it and I was just fine on the panels five minutes ago. 
it took us about five minutes to make that adjustment. I get back on and because of the wind, I think it has cooled off these panels. The water is no longer melting. And now if you get snow or ice underneath your feet, it is just staying slippery. And so you have to be so conscious of your surroundings on this because they change in an instant. And if you're not aware of it, you will be done for. And we've seen a few close calls. So we're really trying to play it safe, not push anything. The kids aren't out here helping me anymore because it's just not as controlled as it could be, especially on this side, because if you don't slide off where that bucket is, you're not hitting anything and you're going straight to the ground, 20 foot drop. This one, it's a 45 foot drop off there. And if you slip here, you just gain momentum. It took me everything I had to slow down. And I was actually putting my hands down, my feet down, and just kind of pushing them into the ground to find screws and let them just rake my hands, rake my feet, whatever it took to make me stop. And it luckily did. So uh, you just gotta be conscious of it, so. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fast sliding. <laughs> oh man, that's sketchy. Back in the bucket. Yep. come with them but some don't these little clips considering this was laid kind of in perfect conditions this has been laid in somewhat patchwork conditions um this side looks pretty darn good i'll definitely have to retape a lot of those seams and you can see those light spots up at the top are where we don't have the peak put on all the way um and some of those light spots we are uh, going back with little chunks of insulation that we've had to cut off. We just lay them back in there before we put a panel down so they're a little more full, which is really kind of nice. Hey, James, what if you start pulling that thing to me and I can help lift it up over this? I think I feel pretty secure right now. You go, you hang on to that. Hang on to that. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't so bad. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Oh, we're on. Okay, we're on. We're on. Okay. Hold this right there. No, 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 Are you okay, dude? That's sketchy. I can come down to the side and hold on to the edge and push it. I think that's my worry. I don't think there's enough momentum. Dude, there's a 10 degree difference in that sun being out. Down. If you're walking around on the shop, you stay fairly warm, it's manageable, but if you're sitting in this basket all day at the bottom end, it's freezing. So luckily, we have this little heater, constant power from the machine, because we can't turn it off because the hydraulics will fail on us and you'll just sink down. We've learned that through trial and error. So if you're on the basket, you at least get some heat on your feet, because it is freezing today. Oh, it's so cold. 
And that dang cloud is staying right with the sun. I thought it was gonna feel like we were on the beach. Here's the big difference. This side is south facing, we get the sun. So it's kind of cleaned off and cleared off quickly. But with the wind right now, it's turning these little bits of water to like crystal clear ice. What it looked like this morning though was this, where it's just frosty. And that is just an ice sheet all the way down. Look at that disaster of a mess we gotta clean up. Ay, ay, ay. We have pressed our luck tonight. So it's time to just squeegee down. All right, all we've got left is that little panel, cut all those, and then the caps. And tomorrow we should button this roof up. We are at the last two panels on this end of the building and the roof as a whole. And what we're doing is because typically you just put this seam on this one and let it go over, um, that's how you do all these other panels. But because we're so close to the edge, I wanted to give this a little more rigidity just in case. Um, so we're doing to here and here. I've gone ahead and butyled both and I don't think that'll cause a problem, but it just makes this a little more rigid over here so that we can, uh, one, hold this on a little better while we're working with it, and two, less is flapping over there until we can cut it, which will be today as well. There we go, second screw of the very last panel on this roof. That's uh, it's a good feeling, but it, I don't like working this close to the edge anymore though. I, I like working in these middle areas for some reason. Well, I don't know, I saw your last camera. What? I was zooming and everything. <laughs>